Traffic 12 o'clock and seven miles opposite direction descending down to 10,000 heavy seven. Climbing out of Boeing Field aboard the 777 Eco demonstrator, we hear this. Level off. Level off. That is the sound of TCAS, the traffic collision avoidance system that's been in cockpits for decades. Our plane's TCAS computer has calculated that another aircraft has changed its path in a way it could conflict with us. It can also communicate directly with the TCAS on another jet to avoid a collision. Clear of conflict. This was not a close call, but whether it's a TCAS alert or a radio advisory from an air traffic controller in Seattle's increasingly crowded skies, it's not unexpected. The nation's airspace can function safely and smoothly because of a system where most aircraft identify themselves. You can see them moving on these screens inside SeaTac's control tower. We can see jets from United, Southwest, Delta, and Alaska, including their destinations, even small planes heading to Boeing Field. This FedEx 777 freighter is a big flying laboratory. We've seen how it was used to prevent collisions on the ground at airports, now being used to prevent them in the air. Airspace is becoming more crowded, and not everything in that airspace is identifying itself. And these days, this is what has everyone's attention. A drone isn't communicating with anybody other than its operator. Conflicts shouldn't happen because small drones are not supposed to fly over 400 feet and within five miles of an airport. But there are examples of when they do illegally. Some sort of a lighted drone just flew right over it. The FAA is studying what could happen when a drone strikes a fast-moving airliner, even comparing damage a drone would do relative to a similar-sized bird. The drone did more. But it's not just drones. And gliders. Boeing test pilot Mike Carricker. What happens if you don't, that other, that other thing in this space is not a cooperative target, has no broadcast, so we have to be able to see it. And maybe we can try to have a camera to help out. Aboard our Boeing Eco Demonstrator is this camera behind the windscreen. It's part of a fledgling technology called Detect and Advise. In this case, it's so new we don't actually see anything from it. The image data is sent back and stored in a computer box in the test racks, which will then be forwarded to Boeing researchers in Australia who are trying to develop the system. So what kind of warning could a pilot receive? If the camera picks up a drone or any unidentified flying object, an indicator might display on a cockpit screen showing its location, likely accompanied by some sort of audio alert. To help the pilots see the target and give some enunciation that now that there's a there's a way to detect a visual object in your flight path and uh, maybe help you find it by yourself or advise on an action. We have outfitted her with technologies that you'll get. The eco demonstrator is a lower cost way to give experiments like detect and advise a chance to become real products. So how do you turn a huge FedEx package freighter into a flying laboratory? So this airplane was delivered in October of last year and went into service for the Christmas rush. But once the rush was over, then Boeing leased it back and began installing the equipment to experiment with these 35 technologies. Those technologies have ranged from our historic 100% biofuel flight to even small experiments. Some will move forward, some may not. Eco Demonstrator Manager Doug Christensen. The opportunity that the Eco Demonstrator program gives us really has shown its value in accelerating technologies and bringing those technologies to our aircraft. This 777 freighter is the fifth and largest Eco Demonstrator so far and plans are already underway for another one next year. Now, there are additional FAA requirements coming by 2020 for aircraft flying over much of the country, what's called ADS-B, a satellite and ground-based system that does a lot of things, including, including allowing better tracking of airplanes, and there are ADS-B products available for drones. Okay, so what about something like, um, say there was a balloon out there? Could they see that and sort of identify this as so a balloon? So that's, that's where they're trying to go. So there's not a requirement if it's a aircraft, like a hand glider or like a balloon that does not have an electrical system on it. Um, but they would like to be able to know that they're out there so they can take advantage, so they can see it, they can avoid it, uh, whatever it is, uh, and save lives.
I mean, you said overall that this eco demonstrator has about 35 different technologies on it. Will they all make it onto the jets? They, they won't. Um, so this is the chance to sort of kind of rake everything into a pile, put it onto an airplane and go fly and go test these things rather than trying to spend a lot of money testing everything individually, which takes more time. So this is the latest eco demonstrator project. There have been several others. Um, this program seems to be accelerating. They tested about 75 technologies so far. About 25 of them are actually on airplanes. About 25 of them didn't make it, and the other 25 are still in development. So it's about a third of each of those.